Shadowland is a new Joe Berlinger six-part documentary series that takes a deep look inside conspiracy theories. It's now streaming on Peacock. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Of course. Happy to uh, talk with you. Uh, the first episode we see January 6th, we see COVID, we see families being torn apart. Talk a little bit about the inspiration for the series. Yeah, well, a couple of years ago, The Atlantic Magazine put out uh, an online series of articles called Shadowland, which was a deep dive into conspiracism and conspiracy thinking. And uh, at the time and for years, I'm, I've been fascinated uh, with the nature of truth and what people believe. Uh, and I thought this would be an excellent idea for a documentary. I didn't realize it would actually become so timely and so, so uh, related to what's going on today. But for me, you know, conspiracy thinking has moved from, you know, the, the fringes to the mainstream. And it's, it's, it's terrifying because I think it, this, it, it's, it's, it's attacking the foundation of what is of our democratic ideals. Um, people have divided into camps. We name call, uh, we vilify each other and half the country looks up and says the sky is red. And that, that, Democracy cannot continue under those circumstances. You know, democracy is all about people with different views coming together, agreeing on some basic facts and doing what's what's best for the common good. And that we know is not happening. The political and social discourse in this country is at an all time low. And it's because we believe very different things about basic, basic facts, you know, like who won the election or, you know, very, it's, it's, it's a, we live in a very frightening time because when people, you know, divide into camps, hate each other, treat each other like two dimensional human beings, that's when totalitarianism, you know, and nobody knows what the truth is. That's when, that's when authoritarian regimes uh, get established. We can and take advantage. Yeah, we, we get to see some of the, you know, the actions, especially with, with January 6th with uh, several people. And, you know, obviously you see what their actions are. You see what their sound bites are. But when you take a look into their backstory, you see they were just an average person who was not involved in politics, who didn't believe these things prior to 2020. You have a certain way of kind of processing how, you know, 2020 was a big year, you know, for better or worse uh, for so many yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. Well, COVID, COVID has accelerated the trends. You know, when people are isolated or feel alone, they want to, you know, they want a sense of belonging. People want to feel like they're part of something big. When something bad happens like COVID, it, it's human nature to want an explanation. So to frame it as as we do in the show, some people believe that COVID is a is a plot by by wealthy families to control the population. Um, so 2020 was, a, you're right, a, a key year that accelerated these trends that have been that have been building and building. It also makes you long for the days of conspiracy theories only being about UFOs and Elvis. You know, that's what like. <laughs> can we uh, hit, similar you times? Hit, you hit you hit the nail on the head. I mean, look, conspiracy thinking has been around, you know, as long as people have been functioning in societies. What's different is that I think about 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, there, 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 you know, there was a time when the news division of a, of a network and the entertainment division of a network were there was just an, an iron wall between the two. And over time, that line has become very blurry. And with the explosion of cable networks in the 80s and 90s, that, you know, news became ratings driven and, and entertainment driven and opinion oriented. And so that, that allowed a lot of different kind of, you know, loose information and misinformation to come into play. That intersects with uh, the rise of social media where like-minded people find each other and confirm their bias. Uh, and, and today, you know, on, on the one hand, I, when I was a kid, my iPhone, I couldn't imagine a, a more amazing device where you know, you could find information at your fingertips like we can today, but we've never had more misinformation and we've never been, you know, you'd think this would connect all of us, but we've never been more disconnected, uh, at, at, you know, as a populace. It's it's a very troubling situation. Um, especially with the holidays coming up and so many families coming together, either for any holiday that they're going to celebrate throughout the new year, there's a lot of different opinions and a lot of times people end up sharing them, you know, they don't want to or tears families apart. Uh, from doing this series, what's maybe some advice that you can give to people, especially as they're coming together with people that they may not necessarily agree with? 
Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, one of the, one of the sad things that's going on, and one of the things that we highlight in the show is that these beliefs is you know is tear these beliefs are tearing people families apart. Um, you know, my only advice is to you know either not talk about these things, uh, which is you know. Uh, People avoid talking about politics for for you know for decades, uh, you know, is a is a standard piece of advice, or just have compassion for for somebody who has a different point of view instead of just deciding they're the enemy. You know that that's the worst thing. We've again we've divided into two camps and we we vilify each other, and if, if that that should not happen at the family level. Well, it, it's a fascinating series, uh, six parts uh, streaming now on Peacock. Joe, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.